All right, Keith Morris, I'm back again after session all night till 2 a.m. back at 12 and doing some more stuff. Today we're doing some smart stuff at class. Um, been asked a lot to show some subwoofer to array alignment and that's what I'm gonna approach today. Um, and then I just wanna kinda talk about what I'm doing in these videos real quick because some people kinda maybe are getting the wrong idea. Um, my idea is to show concept, not how to do one thing or another, or this is right or this is wrong. This is just a uh, technique to generate conversation about this. Um, and I do appreciate the replies and stuff that we're doing. Um, and so my world is, or all of our world is, the world of physics. Um, and then with SMART, we can kind of measure and apply some of this stuff, and then always, with both of those is dealing with the reality that we have to deal with on a daily basis. So that's kind of why I'm doing these videos. Um, so anyways, we're just going to kind of get in real quick and uh, what I th think about when I go ahead and do the uh, sub to top alignment stuff and how I do it. I, I think this is just short, sweet, pretty simple. Okay. So anyways, uh, I want to go through my measurement setup real quick so we understand. I basically have my D show running and I have pink noise coming out of it, of course. And that is feeding my Personas Fire Studio that I'm using for my interface here. And so that's my reference. And then I just have one analyzer mic up in here today. Obviously, we could get more complicated with this. Um, the main deal was where to put the mic in the room. My mic, my room, I'm not really big enough to get far enough away to show like differences like this. So I only have a 15 foot trim height. My room's only about 60 foot throw, so I, I don't really have a way to get in and out of those positions. So I'm gonna do it from one position. And then I'd like to talk about um, how I do not delay locate anything when I do this. In my mind, as long as um, Smart has a reference of time between the array and sub, it doesn't matter if it's zero or a million. And so I'll show you my techniques in doing this. And uh, you know, again, uh, hopefully this will generate some conversation going on. All right, so now I'll start recording here and then blow this back up full screen. Okay, so um, I now have Smart running up on the screen. So my first technique in this is basically to go and just turn on the array and just capture a screenshot of it without delay locating. That's the important thing, okay? And then I'll, I'll show you on the smart screen why here in just a second. So let me turn this on. It's going to get loud. Bear with us. We are audio guys. All right. So what I did was just took a quick screenshot of where the array is in time at a zero time reference, not located. And if you notice now, I get all of these phase wraps now down here to look at to where if we do delay the okay, we wind up with basically one trace down there and it's kind of hard to look at, right? And so this becomes uh, pretty simple here and here's where the touchy situation conversation comes into play, okay? So now it's just simple to just turn on the sub and look where it's at. It, it is very simple, all right? So I'm just gonna unmute the sub, we'll see where it's running in comparison and, and again, I'll mute it and we'll have a little conversation about that, okay? Here we go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and unmute the sub, and we'll take a look at it here. Let me get smart running again. All right, so here's the sub. And I got quite a bit of averaging right now, so if we hit V and reseed the average buffer, we'll be able to see what we're looking at right away. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and capture this too, so I can pause and talk about it. And that is my sub. Okay. So again, I'm going to go ahead and pause uh, the screen and we'll talk about these two traces we're looking at right now. All right. Let me mute this so I get rid of the noise in the air. Okay. So what I want to do is plot these two traces here real quick. So I basically have plotted um, the subwoofer at zero here. And then if we go ahead and follow the line down, we're almost 180 out. Not quite. It's almost a half a rotation out, okay? So here goes the conversation with this. 
can I polarity invert the sub? Or should I use delay? Let's do it both ways. Uh, in my mind, I think polarity inverting it should be fine. That, that'll probably be the argument I'm going to get killed on. Uh, but again, um, we'll just look at the phase traces and see what happens. Okay? So I'll turn Smart back on. With it running, I'll go ahead and invert the polarity of those two uh, cabinets. Okay? And again, I'm using quite the averaging buffer. Um, let me hide the previous sub real quick. All right, so we're now running in real time. So let me just invert the polarity real quick of those two subs. And we'll go ahead and watch the phase trace. And then again, we're pretty much locked up here. Could use a, maybe a hair more delay. But if you see, it, it was just a matter of getting these traces to lock on top of each other. And with all the wraps down here, it, it's a pretty easy thing to accomplish in my mind, okay? So let me undo the polarity now, and we'll just throw some delay in there, and I'll show you the same thing, just adding little amounts of delay at a time. Cool? I'll say this is the way most people do it, all right? All right, so I'm seeing my sub now run um, in front of my array. So I'm just going to literally just start delaying back until I see these traces lock, okay? And we're right in the crossover area where we have all the overlap. Okay, this is where we're sharing information. And so this is basically the trace I'll probably be looking at. So let me go in and put some delay in the sub real quick. So I'll, I'll just put in two milliseconds real quick so we can see it move. In my mind, it's going to wind up being five or six. That was a fairly subtle move right there. Okay. So let me go ahead and slap four in, and you'll see me get closer. Okay. Here's four milliseconds of delay. Now you can see it shifting over a little bit. Almost there. Let's reseed real quick, see right where we're at. And like I said, we're probably, I'm going to try seven just to try to nail it. And one more, we'll try eight. And again, kind of the same thing going on. Traces are locked. I, in my mind, either way, I think we're going to accomplish our goal. Um, and again, there's no right, no wrong way. Don't beat me up too bad on this one. Um, but basically, this is, that's how I accomplish the sub uh, alignment. Now, I did find that once you get way far away from the PA, these wraps will be pretty extreme. So. Um, I was playing around with maybe just putting a default time. If I'm 50 feet away, maybe put a default time of 25, 30 milliseconds in the in the reference delay, and then you would then it'll kind of settle these down. Because remember now, the more delay, the steeper the slope, and that's something to pay attention to when you're trying to match these traces up with each other. If this one kind of angled away, it needs another complete wrap of delay. Okay, and that's also the question, which wrap do you look at? Well, you keep delaying until the traces lock directly on top of each other, and I pretty much you nailed it through the whole crossover region. All right, and that's my take on subs, man. Done deal.